grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I bring you greetings on this Lord's Day from my brothers on the faculty at Concordia Theological Seminary and our students. We are very grateful for the partnership that we share with Zion Congregation and your pastor, Pastor Hall, in the confession and proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it's good to be with you here today. The text uh, for this morning's sermon is the Holy Gospel from Luke 18, which you heard just a few minutes ago. The Passover itinerary is set. Jesus says to his disciples, we are going up to Jerusalem. For generations upon generations, pilgrims had been going up to Jerusalem to keep the sacred festival. But this trip, this singular pilgrimage, will render Passover obsolete for the one who speaks these words is the Son of Man who is going up to the holy city to suffer, to die, and to rise again. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday before the beginning of Lent holds two things before our eyes. The first is the truth and the necessity of Jesus' suffering. Second, the mercy of the Son of God who suffers and dies for us. There's no small amount of irony in our text as it introduces Jesus' final days in Jerusalem. The disciples who had been with the Lord for over three years and had heard him at least twice before predict his impending passion, they are blind. They do not see what is about to happen to him. Yes, they had seen him with their eyes, they had heard him with their ears, they had touched him with their hands. But they still do not grasp why it was necessary that the Son of Man should suffer these things. And then on the other hand, there is the blind beggar who cannot see with his eyes, but he recognizes that this Jesus is the Son of David, the Lord of mercy. The disciples see, but they do not believe. The blind man does not see, and yet he believes. Jesus tells his disciples, that things are going according to script, that is, according to what was written by the prophets. The Son of Man is going to be handed over to the Gentiles. They're going to ridicule him with cruel mockery. He is made a target for spit and treated with the contempt deserved only by a criminal. Tortured at the hands of sinners, this Lord who came to forgive sins will die a sinner's death. He will be crucified. But Luke tells us that the disciples understood none of these things, for they were hidden from them. They did not grasp what Jesus was saying. Human reason our own flesh and blood cannot understand redemption. The disciples could not grasp why it was necessary that their Lord 
should suffer such a fate. Remember, it is only after Jesus' resurrection from the dead that Jesus will open their minds to understand the Scriptures and so to realize that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer on the cross and be raised from the dead. But for now, this latest prediction of his passion is back. It does not make sense that the Messiah, the long-expected Son of Man, would lay down his life, shedding his blood for the world. Suffering does not seem to square with their notions of a Messiah and the establishment of his kingdom. The Messiah, that the Messiah would come and topple all of Israel's enemies from their high perches and overturn their mighty thrones, that sounds reasonable. But to suffer shame and to be spit upon like the common train, no, that does not fit the picture. That the Messiah would liberate the oppressed, give sight to the blind, heal the sick, that they could handle, but die at the hands of the ungodly Gentiles? No way. Their carnal minds do not accept the things of the Spirit. And so, the scriptures are closed to them. Jesus' words remain an enigma and stand in contradiction to their reasoning. It is incomprehensible that God's holy son would die for the sins of the world and in that bloody death justify the ungodly even while they were still his enemies. But the scripture had promised it. The prophets foretold it. But the disciples could not grasp it. And neither can you. For you confess. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. You see, when all is said and done, you are no different from the disciples standing on the other side of Good Friday and Easter. Diedrich Bonhoeffer would put it like this, because Jesus wants to be our freedom, he must first become a stumbling block for us before he can be our salvation. And Jesus' cross is a stumbling block. But it's not enough to know simply that Jesus suffered and died. That fate has befallen in one way or another every human being. And there is no human life without suffering. And sooner or later, all human beings, you and me included, will die. In one of his sermons on this text from Luke 18, Dr. Luther said it is not enough to know about the suffering of Christ. We must also know the heart and the will of Christ in this suffering. And this is what is revealed by Jesus in the healing of the blinding on the outskirts of Jericho. Mercy is not self-evident in, in this fallen world. You don't see mercy in a storm that rips through a community 
destroying property, and overturning life. There's no mercy in an abortion clinic where unborn lives are dismembered in the name of freedom. Or where is mercy in the brutality that we so often see in the streets of our cities where might seemingly makes right? The elderly and, dis and the disabled are abandoned. There's no mercy there for them. The homeless seek in shelter, seek in vain for shelter, and the hungry are left with empty stomachs. That's the world we live in. Mercy is not apparent. And mercy was not apparent to this blind beggar. Sitting beside the roadside, he was dependent on the whims of those who walked by for a few coins. There were no guarantees that they would be generous. He had no assurance that his pleas for money would be answered. And it's into this world devoid of mercy that Jesus comes. And Jesus approaches Jericho, and his arrival stirs up a commotion. And in the midst of the excitement and the noise, the blind man cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Others there would rebuke his, this pesky beggar, calling, him, calling upon him to shut up. But he is persistent. He will not be silent. He cries out even louder, son of David, have mercy on me. His prayer brings the procession to a halt. And then Jesus gives himself to this man so completely with a question. What do you want me to do for you? The petition is not for a few coins that would enable him to buy another meal. Rather, Lord, let me receive my sight. And Jesus says to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Jesus' words say what they do and do what they say. His words are spirit and life, and they carry with them the Lord's own authority. The blind man receives what he does not see. His vacant eyes do not see Jesus, but his ears hear, and his heart clings to Jesus' words. He receives his son. How different from the disciples who had seen Jesus, but whose ears could not believe his words about his impending death and resurrection. Dr. Luther, in one of his sermons on this text, says that we are to learn from the blind man we are to let the blind man tutor us in the art of holy begging. That is, how to lay hold of Jesus' words, which reveal that his art and will are nothing other than unbounded mercy for sinners. We learn from this blind beggar to believe in what we do not yet see. That is the art of faith. To cling to Christ's word, even in the darkness. To believe what you do not yet see. We are tutored by the blind beggar to trust that God 
for the sake of his son Jesus Christ is merciful to sinners. He is merciful to you. He is merciful for you. Other righteous people in the course of human history have suffered torture unjustly. But that is not what makes Jesus unique. Jesus' suffering, his passion, is driven by his will to be your Savior, to show you mercy. And that is why he goes up to Jerusalem. He makes that journey to reconcile you to his Father through the shedding of his blood on the cross. Like the blind beggar, you do not see Jesus or his mercy. You hear his words preached into your ears and proclaimed at this altar as under bread and wine he gives you his body to eat, his blood to drink in this supper of the New Testament. Receive what you do not see. And like the beggar, with eyes then with eyes then open to the mercy of God, follow Christ your Lord, glorifying God for all that he has done. Blessed indeed are those who hear the word of God. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the life everlasting.